My name is Moses Kemibaru. I'm the founder and CEO of Dotsavi. And I like this phrase, which I kind of came up with a few months ago when I really started to sort of crystallize my thoughts around what is the implication of AI within marketing specifically, but across everything that we do in the future of work. And I came up with this phrase, which is don't make a human do a robot's job. We're getting to a point where the robot can actually do a good enough job around certain use cases that don't necessarily have to be a human. And rather than fearing this transition, we need to ask ourselves the fundamental questions of the things that we have always done. You know, when you bring computers, say, into the equation, as was the case maybe 20, 30 years ago, that transition always seems to create a lot of controversy around, is this the way it should be? Is this new way uh, acceptable? And what are the long-term considerations in that sense? I'd like to go into six things that I think are fundamentally um, the reasons why AI is so important and vital for the future of work. AI is transformative, right? I remember once going to the UK and going to the McDonald's, and it's the first time I saw the tablet thing where you place an order, you put in your credit card, everything that happened was automated until the point where the only time you interacted with a human is when they gave you a tray with your Big Macs. In the early days, for those of you who are not as old as I am, this was what they told us would happen when AI arrives. Do we all know what it is? The Terminator. What about the young people in the room? Solomon, do you know what this is? Have you watched this movie? Yes. You, are you just saying that for PR or it's for real? Because <laughs> you weren't even born then, yeah? Yeah, but The Terminator was this movie, the very first movie back in 1984 that sort of presented a future where computers and technology got so advanced and so powerful that they actually destroyed humanity, all right? And this is what they've been telling us for years. And if you keep reading and hearing what people are saying, even in your master saying, this technology has the potential to destroy humanity. It's very real. It's very possible. And we can go through the generative AI shifts that have happened over time. The internet, of course, came in the 1990s. Um, that is when, you know, this whole transition started. You know, things like Netscape made the internet widely accessible and usable for the masses. Uh, mobile now sort of untethered the internet, untethered us, allowed us to have mobility in terms of communications. And of course, with the early web browsers that came with that. Uh, then social media in the 2010s allowed us to sort of consume and also create content. We became active participants with what we're interacting with online. It was no longer a one-way uh, monologue. It became an interactive session. If you want to understand how significant that is, ask Kenya Power. They will tell you that they have learned very well and very early how to deal with the fact that consumers talk back at you. Right? And that's the biggest paradigm. We started seeing that dialogue happening there. And then, of course, generative AI. And this is something that, honestly, although ChatGPT sort of encapsulated or crystallized the moment, it's something that's been happening for some time. Um, the, the ability to use you know, technology to create text, content, and even code. Jensen Huang. This is a name you guys need to know in the same way that you know Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. This name is going to be big in the next few years. And the reason for this is that NVIDIA is the company behind the GPUs, or what they call the graphical processor units, that power generative AI. And basically, it's a new kind of uh, computing paradigm, and that's what makes generative AI possible. And here's the crazy thing. They're talking about something called ChatGPT 5, right? This is the one that's going to come after 4. And the words of Sam Altman, he said, when this thing comes out, it's going to make ChatGPT 4 look quaint. It's going to look like a baby relative to ChatGPT 5. Apparently, it's so powerful that they think if we release this thing, that could be actually be the manifestation of the Terminator. It's that sort of intelligence, right? And the point I'm trying to make here is that if this is that significant, and all the experts, Bill Gates consistently, all of them are saying, bigger than the internet, bigger than the internet, bigger than the internet, then the question you've got to ask yourself is, if it's that significant, how are you preparing for the future of work in this context? You will find a lot of lower level functions, things that used to be done by humans, are increasingly going to be migrating to these platforms. All right? It's kind of like the example I remember from two years ago when I attended the launch of Wowzy. And Jeremy Awari, who was then the CEO or the MD of APSA, told us they used to have a department called loan processing. Okay, the loan processing department had humans, I think about 40 of them. When you applied for a loan to buy a car or to buy a computer, they would receive your application. They would then do all the credit reference bureau and all manually. And about five days later, they would tell you, you are now worthy of a loan. That stuff is now done using something called robotic process automation, AI. They've created software, they've trained it. It receives your data electronically, and usually in a matter of seconds, it will tell you whether you're going to get a loan or not. That entire department was retrained and moved to the front office, and now there's one or two supervisory people on top of that. 
things like customer service, automating things like how you interact with chatbots and stuff, it's no longer a human. It's a software that's able to anticipate and deliver the solutions. And medical diagnosis is one of the areas that I think is really exciting. And I'll tell you why. About a week ago, I attended an event and I met the CIO of one of the medical groups, so the hospital groups in Nairobi. They were telling me they brought in some new AI technology in their diagnostics department. And what this thing does is when you have an MRI scan or an X-ray, it takes it electronically. And then the AI overlays uh, a system they've installed. And it's able to tell you things like, you know, for the doctor's benefit as they're doing diagnosis, you know, you have a fractured bone or you've got some lung issue, it'll come up. But what's even interesting is, number one, the cost. Yeah, Before that particular testing or diagnosis would cost 25,000 shillings. It now costs 600 shillings. Okay, a massive drop in price. But here's the part where it gets sexy. In addition to seeing that you have a fracture, as it's looking at the rest of the tissue, it actually can raise a red flag and say, I see some abnormal cells here that suggest that these could be precursors to cancer. Now think about that. This is now anticipating, predicting, uh, preempting the possibility of other health issues without even you looking for them because the data is actually just scanning the entire thing, which a human could never do and suddenly you're getting even better medical care. So people are actually getting treatment or even getting early diagnosis on certain issues without it even being intentional because of this 600 shilling test. That is radical. One of the things I've learned and seen in the work that I do is I literally get through probably two or three days work in one day. I don't know that you guys are seeing the same experience. And of course, in a world where time is always at a premium, if you can do much, much more, it makes you more competitive, it potentially earns you more money, makes you more satisfied, because now you can have more time with your kids, you can have more time to go jogging, you can have more time to watch Arsenal beating Liverpool, whatever you want to do, you know? Find the time. Generative AI, specifically in marketing, is changing everything. We're able to transform how we do our content creation. We're here with one of my colleagues, she's in content uh, creation in social media. And we had a conversation two days ago and she confirmed, yes, we used ChatGPT to kind of streamline and sort of speed up the process of content generation, the things like calendars and so forth. We can automate design, strategy, innovative solutions. In fact, a few times we've done some pitches. We did an entire concept and idea within Generative AI and then presented it to the team for vetting and validation before we move to the creative stage. Yeah, these are things that require six humans to sit in a room and brainstorm and come up with an idea. Yeah, you're doing it in the robot and then you tell the robot, okay, spit this out, give it to our team, let's vote on it. It's also things like, you know, targeted advertising, the fact that you can target the exact person at the right time in the right place. This stuff has been working in the background for years in platforms like Google and Facebook. And really, in the marketing context, you know, it changes the possibilities in so many different ways. So question, is this a real person or not? That is not a real person. This person does not exist.com. You can go there create somebody to a specific ethnic type, gender, etc. And in the way that we've been buying images and creative assets for communications and marketing, you can now get a realistic output in less than a, something like 10, 15 seconds of a completely not real person. So you now don't have any personal identification issues. You have no data privacy issues. You don't have to deal with the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner. You can create people who are almost real and they are, yeah, avoid being fined. Yeah? So we're seeing a situation where this is going to transform industries because now photographers will look and say, hang on a second, does that mean I have a job or not? Uh, somebody working in a creative space will be thinking, hang on a second, if this can do this, what does that mean about the likes of Shutterstock and all? It's going to radically transform everything. Have any of you guys ever used Otter? Yeah? This thing is practically magical, and I've been using it, I think, for about four years. Yeah, you speak into it, it transcribes everything you speak. Even when you say things like, mm, um, I'm not sure, it eliminates that and gives you clean text. I think the accuracy rate is probably at over 95%. So that means whoever used to be in your meetings, in your Zoom calls and all, who used to take notes is no longer required because the AI will do the work for you, all right? And even I think in accent terms, it's actually pretty accurate, yeah? But increasingly, even nowadays, if you use Google Meet, the way we use um, our Google Workspace at work, we record the meetings and also you get in, uh, transcriptions built into the software. It may not be as good as Otter, but, you know, it's free. But it means the person who had to sit down and take notes and all that can just grab the copy and guess what? Paste it into ChatGPT and say summarize, right? So that effort is now gone. Yeah, These are practical things that can save you many, many minutes in a day. If I'm a creative designer right now in any sphere, I should be getting very worried in terms of not so much that I lose my job, but learning the new skill sets that allow me to use these tools to amplify my ability and make me more valuable to an organization.
As we look at the local market, this is the part where we start to see some additional practical applications happening on the ground in Kenya. You can imagine in the traditional sense what used to happen. They probably had to get uh, location licenses. They had to hire actors. They had to get photographers. They had to get makeup artists. They had to do all the things to get shots like that, which now are done automatically through AI. They've saved time. They've increased turnaround uh, efficiency. They've saved on costs. Um, they've pissed off a lot of people. Uh, but all in all, what we're saying is Safaricom is experimenting to see what is the future going to look like if they go this direction. But basically what I'm trying to say is this ship has sailed, all right? More and more brands in Kenya and globally are going to start doing this kind of thing because guess what? It's cheaper, it's faster, etc. But then you have the dark side of this. Yeah, in this instance, this also trends. AI artist who came up with the original creative. There's been a series of images of them floating online. Uh, this child uh, grabbing a chicken or a pot of uh, food. The mom chasing them and it's kind of humorous. It's clever. It's interesting. Uh, but the scary thing is you can then see the same image on a billboard for Superloaf. And they've taken the same image and simply transposed it. They then overlaid um, <laughs> the loaf of bread, which as you can see is proportionally wrong. It seems to be too big for her. But more importantly, did they pay for the image? Are there any licensing considerations? Did anybody spend any amount of time doing any serious work to actually do that creative? So these guys got essentially intellectual property, which of course, again, is debatable because is AI generated creative actually intellectual property? So there's debates. And I think the legal side of these things are gonna get very hot in the next few years. Because if I'm the guy who created the prompt that came up with this beautiful creative, then that's my IP. Yeah? Yeah. For me, this is what genuinely excites me because in the real world, how the hell would you do this? Are you going to get to Ferrari to bring you the car? Are you going to go to a location, you know, get... How would you do it? You can't. And you can imagine when the technology gets to that level where it's literally photorealistic, uh, we'll be able to enter realms of creativity that are currently not possible. And for a marketer, for a brand, that is very exciting. So let's get to the six reasons and why the future of work actually needs AI. Number one, speed of execution. I think I made this point severally. The speed, insane. You can do more things in less time in a way that was just not possible before. Number two, the quality of the outputs. Just like the visuals I showed you of the Formula One car going through the African village. Some of that stuff, even if you give it to an illustrator or graphic artist, it's going to take him weeks or months to do. Probably the prompt took less than you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes to do on mid-journey. Increase productivity. Um, the work that you can actually output, the quality of the work as well can greatly improve. The cost of execution, improved revenues. Of course, if you're saving costs, increasing productivity, what's the obvious outcome? You're going to make more money, all right? This is the classic case for a CEO or anybody running a business. And here's the, but this is probably the one that's most controversial for me because sometimes when I use this stuff, as somebody who like, knows what hard work looks like, I actually feel like I'm cheating. So in a nutshell, Gen AI for me is what I call first spec. Get work done faster. Make work easier. Work smarter. Keep work simpler. Create work that's better. Get work done cheaper. First spec. Now, the next level, Bill Gates, one of the thought leaders in this space, he's talking about something called AI agents, right? This is the next thing. So whatever we're doing right now in relative terms is going to be quaint. He had to quote Sam Altman. These things will understand natural language and perform various tasks and over personalized assistance based on a rich understanding of our lives. Foresees a future where AI agents become ubiquitous, simplifying or enriching our daily interactions. And they're going to distinguish between today's AI bots and the future is going to be serious. So unlike the ones we're doing right now, like we go to chat GPT and put in a single task, these things will be proactive. They'll be thinking almost like human beings, performing tasks across applications and improving over time. Yeah, so this is almost like a virtual assistant, but it's actually intelligent. You may not even need to prompt it. It'll be telling you what to do, right? You won't have to think, yeah? Think about that for a second. Opportunities, new jobs, all right? As much as we're going to lose jobs, it's going to open up possibilities for entirely new types of jobs. Right now, if you go online, there are people who call themselves a chat a prompt engineer, right? People who have mastered the art of prompting the platform to produce a superior outcome. Entrepreneurship, they're going to be opportunities to create entirely new businesses on the back of AI. Yeah, this is that internet moment, that dot-com moment where you can create something today and a year later it's worth millions of dollars because you've solved a big problem using AI, using some kind of proprietary tool. Industry transformation, 
there are people who are building entire factories uh, using products like the NVIDIA um, Omniverse system before even building a single brick and able to cost it, understand the mechanics, the workflows and everything. And then the AI optimizes it before they even spend a single shilling on a site to break ground. So what you're gonna see is situations where before you even attempt to do something, you put it to the AI and it even tells you whether this is viable or practical in any way before you potentially lose millions of shillings in the process. So ultimately, it's about embracing AI for a brighter future of work, right? Again, don't give a human a robot's job. Do the stuff a human's meant to do, let the robot do its thing. And if we can actually take this to heart as something that's actually gonna make our lives better, I think AI can actually improve everything and all the things that we do. Thank you.